Hello and welcome to Hops and Bros. This week, we're talking about something that you guys didn't request. <laughs> they, can, they can see in the description below. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess you can see it in the title <laughs> too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the thumbnail. For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Ups and Brews Ups Alright, so this week we're talking about Isinglass. Uh, Isinglass is, is a type of finning, uh, but, but Chris, where, where does it come from? Uh, it comes from a fish. But uh, I, I fell into an article that um, Nestorian made because he read some vegan uh, influencer that was pissed off that uh, some animal products were found into wine and beer. So he, died, he dove a little bit deeper into the subject and dug out some information about Isinglass and a lot of, of information that I re really didn't know about it. So Isinglass comes from the word Hausenblows in German or Dutch, depends on where it comes, but uh, it means that it's a sturgeon, sturgeon, bladder, sturgeon, sturgeon max? Bladder? Sturgeon? Yeah, sturgeon, sure. sturgeon bladder. Is, uh, is the word. Yeah. Sturgeon Simpson is a, uh, an artist as well. I'm talking about the sturgeon, the fish. Sturgeon, actually. Sturgeon Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so the fish. So roughly, Isinglass is a gelatin made from sturgeon bladder or just fish bladder. Um, in history, Russia is widely and majorly known for their high quality Isinglass from their sturgeon. Uh, there was a couple of other countries making Isinglass too because it was widely, widely used in a lot of things. Uh, speaking of jello, which is a desert, uh, glue, cement, and also used in beer, uh, which Max is gonna dive a lot deeper into the science of how it makes how it makes it into your beer. Um, but it's cool because we can easily tie two things together, which is when we first started talking about it. I think we were talking about Guinness trading off stuff to get some Isinglass from Russia, right? Yeah, exactly. We, how, we spoke about uh, that. Yeah, yeah we, we, I was about to, to mention it if you didn't. But yeah, so Guinness would, uh, well not just Guinness, just stouts in general, the Russian Imperial Stout, one of the reasons why it was so popular in Russia was trade. So England would trade their, their porters, their stouts, they would bring them all the way to Russia, and on their way back, you didn't want an empty ship. You would want something in there, and the best thing to do was actually to stock up on sturgeon. Come back and actually use those bladder, bladders to, to clarify your beer. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it on uh, yeah. on, on that. But yeah. the the production process was actually quite interesting because they need, they need to squash up this uh, bladder uh, very flat and make it dry to use it after in a different ways. So it's a very curious thing, but it also it was very very popular back in the days. Max, how does it work in beer? Yeah, definitely. So um, it, it, it's interesting because there is a lot of people who uh, who still think that beer isn't vegan. Uh, I get the question uh, once in a while at Ban Shea, is your beer vegan? Yeah, our beer is vegan. Isinglass is not used anymore. And even when I talk to my teachers, uh, they, they they've mostly haven't played with it. I haven't used it in beer because it's not necessary anymore. There's other ways to filter your beer. There's other ways to get that clearness in your beer. Um, so the way it works is that it helps uh, proteins and, and haze forming uh, enzymes that's in your beer to flocculate out. Uh, so it's as simple as that. You add that to your fermenter, you add a couple handfuls and then boom, it's going to help that flocculation of any kind of proteins or yeast that is big enough to be seen or to stay in solution. Um, nowadays there's other ways to do it and one, one of the ways that we use is um, it's called Irish Moss. Irish Moss is 
uh, widely spread. Pretty much everyone uses it. It's everywhere, and it's been used for hundreds of years. Uh, and it's a pre-fermentation uh, thinning agent where you add it in, and it actually helps with, in the same way, flocculation of all those proteins out of solution later on in the process. Uh, and I've actually done tests with uh, with Irish moss where, depending on when you add it and how much you add, there is a point of diminishing return. Isinglass is uh, is still a good one because it does flocculate out, it does clarify a beer a lot, but if you have the right filter, if you have the right um, right equipment, you don't really need it. Uh, yeah. There's also other ways like silica gel uh, or gelatin even is used to clarify beer. Uh, okay. It's kind of, kind of weird. But yeah, yeah if you want to keep your beer vegan, which in the market that we are right now, you really do. You don't want to alienate any strat of the population oh yeah uh, and therefore even guinness has found ways to go around it and not use isinglass because isinglass was big for them for hundreds of years that's the only thing they would use to clarify their beer so generally it would add some flavor to the beer uh, and when you make a big change like that a, a main ingredient change really you you have to be careful because people are going to taste it yeah and i heard a lot of breweries are using centrifuges right now um, and on another point, there's one brewery or I guess two breweries in Ontario, maybe more, but one close to where we are. Uh, ABC Brewing Company is still using Isinglass in their beers. They're brewing the closer to a more traditional, uh, I guess, English style of brewing and they're still using open fermentation process <laughs> nice. with, with the Krausen. Uh, I'm I'm 100% for point fermentation. I think it's a great way to brew, and I think it's really, um, it's really awesome. Even to just see it, to look at it, uh, there are some dangers with it for sure. I mean, the room where you do this in has to be, uh, I mean, pretty hermetically sealed. You don't want anything to go in, and you want to be very careful. Even with open fermentation, there is a part of it that is closed. Uh, it's just a Krausen part that, that's open because yep. you have that layer protecting your beer. Uh, we can talk about open fermentation at another time. Anyways, <laughs> uh, to go back to Isinglass, I'm actually surprised that they use it because I, I don't think it's necessary for those styles. Yeah. I, I think it's it's a I guess cool marketing thing, but also you're going to be paying a lot of money for a product that's not now premium kind of deal, which is kind of odd. Yeah, but and that I'd have to taste it to see if it really does it makes a difference, right? I'm I'm not sure it really makes a difference. I guess it's just a, a good point into like a vegan beer argument that I had. Like um, we we shared things on uh, Twitter. I talk a little bit about it on Twitter with Drunk Polkaru, and they chimed in and they were like, "Yo, we're still using Isinglass, and we're proud to do this and uh, bring the old school way and all that." and Kudos to them, that's, I guess, if it works well. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, if it works well. But uh, again, I hope a, I hope they indicate it clearly on their products. Yeah. Because uh, it's not like... And again, not that it, it, it makes a bad name to beer, because it really doesn't as long as it's well indicated. Same thing with another brewery that I'm not going to name. Uh, had a lot of lactose in their products. I mean, even when uh, they, 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 they were using it, sometimes they weren't mentioning it on the product, which is a big no-no. If you're using lactose, you got to tell people because there are there is allergies to that. It's not yeah. like gluten where you know there's gluten in beer. It, it's another product that people have allergies to. Or same thing, say you were doing an oyster stout uh, and you were putting real oysters in there. You got to put it on because yeah. people are allergic to shellfish and it could be could be very dangerous for people. It could be deadly. Uh, <laughs> Could be deadly, yep. yeah. Uh, ice and glass, maybe not so much. It's more of a dietary preference. Yeah. But still, I mean, you know, you don't want to alienate too many people. Nope, never. And bring, we we know, in, in the brewing industry, there's a lot of uh, people that you don't want to fuss, I guess. Yeah. So uh, I guess closing words, ice and glass, uh, thinning, some way to clarify your beer. Not necessarily, um, not necessarily necessary these days. There's other ways, as you've mentioned, centrifuges are a great way to initially do it. Uh, but we could do a full episode on centrifuge and how it's used in filtration because it is, it's, it, it's not a replacement. It's kind of, it works with your filters. But anyway, we'll talk about that in another episode. Oh. If you like this episode, please leave a like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see in the next episode. And we'll see you in the next video, guys.